Good morning. Well, I tried to get some sleep last night. <laughs> I woke up at 2.11 a.m. this morning. And here it is, 4.44. And I'm starting this, using 4.44 as my starting point of late because 4.44, again, triple numbers are triple master numbers to me. And four, all, all numbers together like that are, are master numbers. And triple ones are triply so. And the four is Earth. And it's grounding the energy on Earth. That's what I see myself as doing. I'm grounding the energy of truth and love on our planet. And I'm not the only one. But I'm encouraging you to recognize that that is what we are doing. We are grounding love and truth and the light on this planet to co-create together the new world that we long for in the deepest part of our being, in our deep heart, our soul, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, the title that I've chosen for today is The Internet is Key to Global Awakening. I'm going to read an article by Zen Gardner called, Are the World's Elite Elites on the Run? If so, it is because of the internet and because truth is their enemy. Many in the ivory towers of world planning do not like what is happening and threaten to tighten their grip on the last bastion of a truly free press. What can we do? And I provide the link to the article. I'm now going to read the article. Again, the author is Zen Gardner, and this is from wakeupworld.com, and I will post the link to that in the description of this video, as well as uh, I'll probably put the whole article in a note on uh, Facebook, and the link will also be provided, of course. But this is something that I thought was, was worth uh, sharing with you. I read it. Shortly after I did my video yesterday, as I was going through my email, someone emailed it to me, which I'm very grateful for. It was written on the uh, 17th of this month, so it's a fresh article. And here's what he wrote. An awakened populace is the enemy of would-be controllers. The war on terror is a war on human freedom by a dystopian state structure disguising itself as a protecting surrogate parent from an enemy of their own making. It's all by assumption and generations of conditioning, but the veil is coming off. Thanks to their own military invention called the Internet, millions are discovering the full truth. History is a lie. Religion is a control system. Money is a hoax. Government is a for-profit corporation. And we don't need their goddamn hierarchy. Conscious truth cannot be stopped. Like they say, you may kill my body, but you can never destroy my soul. Fear is the number one tool of the powers that would be. If we don't fear, they have no power. The cornucopia of laws and rules, written, unwritten, and subconscious, is their method of entrainment, crime, punishment. They define what's a crime, and people get in line for fear of punishment. Socially, it's the same. Break the social norms and be shunned, or called out. Use the long, wrong language and you can face incarceration. All restrictions put in place by these would-be controllers. Screw them. They're arrogant, lying bastards and the truth is they're scared to death of us. Want to know their mindset? The monster George Bush Sr. said the following in an interview published by Sarah McClendon in 1992. Quote, if the people were ever to find out what we have done, we would be chased down the streets and lynched." End quote. Damn straight, buddy. The New World Order is backfiring. People are noticing the powers that be 
seem to be stepping up their program of late. While revolution spilling into the streets is often of their own making to bring about draconian crackdowns and to foist new control systems on the populace, what we're witnessing now is different. Police brutality and several recent attempts by agent provocateurs have been ferreted out by demonstrators armed with cameras and internet access. Bankster funding of police has been exposed, and even efforts by the Democratic Party, MoveOn.org and ACORN have been identified and snuffed. This is huge. It's all about personal empowerment. People wonder why things don't change. It's because people observe and follow, observe and follow. Same old, same old. Hoping someone will do something. Choice is within carefully constructed confines to where they think they're free. But it's all within a tightly restricted playground created by social engineers and executed via their academic and media minions. Yes, it's that controlled, or so they attempt it to be. The wild card is the all-powerful, eternal human spirit. When we come to the realization of what we truly are, we are an unstoppable foe to these tyrannical beasts. They've turned our planet into a human farm with the people hypnotized to behave as cattle convinced of their own helplessness. Sorry, boys. The gig is up. This marvelous planet is our space station, and you have no business trying to take it over. So get the hell out of here. Humanity is rising, and you're in the way. The elites are the truly enslaved. What differentiates the psychopathic controlling elites from true humanity is a lack of empathy. They are possessed by a self-serving, self-preserving mindset that they are literally enslaved to. They know they're, us they're us usurpers and subject themselves to self-flagellating rituals and mind control to be sure they're not influenced by any s real sense of humanity that might deter their plan. In turn, they must exercise this Machiavellian control over others since they themselves are subjected to it in order to get what temporal power they've been loaned by their higher ups. Yes, the abuse cycle. The abused becomes the abusers. In their case, it's off the charts wickedness. Yes, the controllers are all controlled even more than humanity. But that isn't going to be our problem any longer. We should ship this wicked 1% or whomever or whatever they are to their own little island, take away all their toys and boats, and let them have at it between each other. Freedom of tyranny over, the t over other tyrants, I always say. Ha! Seize control. Jump now. It won't be long now. They've got so much crap going on, it's going to be hard to avoid seeing these psychopaths try to take the whole world down in their mass death ritual madness. We may have to muster through some really tough times ahead, but I really believe the wake-up call, or the wake-up, is scaring the shit out of these bastards, and they're trying to step on the gas to push their program through. What's interesting is hurry and haste is not their strong suit. Their strength has always been the slow burn without people noticing the noose being tightened around their necks. Their plan for global control, their plans for global control go back centuries and even millennia. Pesky humanity has been a tough animal for them to fully corral. We seem to keep busting out with new life and consciousness in spite of their war on our minds and bodies. Isn't that cool? They can't control us. Must drive them nuts. They try as hard as they want. They can try as hard as they want, but they'll never do it. 
in spite of their fluoridating our pineal glands, genetically modifying and poisoning our food supply, chemtrailing our skies with toxic metals and monstrous germs and nanostrands, killing off our youth and innocence in wars, introducing viruses into populations, shooting us up with anti-human cocktails and shoving drugs down our throats and attempting to paralyze our hearts and control our minds with fear and propaganda. They can't keep us down. We're like a population of freaking Rasputins. The key, wake yourself up fully and everyone around you. The only way to fully wake up is to take action, period. If you don't open the spigot of your life by researching the truth, communicating, withdrawing from the system, turning off the mainstream media in every form, alerting others as to what's going on, you'll go back to sleep. It's that simple, and it's that urgent. The conscious awakening of humanity is unfolding at an exponential rate and is having an impact we're seeing manifest daily before our eyes. But if you've ever tried to push a heavy car to jumpstart it, or attempted to get a big boulder moved, the most crucial point is when the momentum is just beginning to roll. And it's make it or break it to get to that magical kickstart speed. We're getting there. Push harder and call others to get on board in any and every way you can. Write, talk, get out of the banks altogether. Not just go into smaller ones, at least as much as you can, and use your money as a weapon against them. Buy local. Don't buy corporate crap as much as possible. Start a garden and grow your own food. Tell others around you to do the same. And if you don't know what to do, send help to those you believe are doing what needs to be done so they can commit their full time to doing it if they're not already, or to help them do even more. Everyone needs to participate. I guarantee you as you do these things it'll come back to you big time in fulfillment, happiness, increased conscious awareness, love, and even financially. You're tapping into the ultimate free energy system of the universe. Let yourself go and watch a marvelous synchronistic loving world unfold around you. Act on your heart. The time is now. Love always. Zen. What an amazing piece he wrote. And I tried to email him to get permission, but I couldn't find any contact information on his web page or on the web page that I found it. So if anybody knows how to get in touch with him, tell him I've used it and I've given him full credit for it, which I will always do. I will never take somebody else's work and claim it for my own. That is that is totally out of integrity and I live as best I can by being in integrity to my own soul and my own spirit and my own sense of of what is right and proper to do. Anyway, he hit the nail on the head in so many points that I will not have time to go over them all. But go back and listen again or, or read it read the note that I'll post on Facebook. I posted on uh, I posted on YouTube too except you can't. That doesn't give you the the capability of doing that. In any case, they are attacking the internet here in the United States. They're trying to pass efforts that will place greater and greater restrictions and corporate control over the internet and uh, they may even pass the bill. It's important for anonymous and others that have the capability to take whatever steps can be taken. I'm not a computer geek. I don't know the hows and the and the I don't know what can be done, what's possible and what isn't possible. But I know that there's a lot possible on this internet that has been created and what needs to be shut down is not the free press part of it, but the government control part of it. Somehow that needs to be stopped they need to be hacked. These people are insane that are trying to rule the world. And people, somebody wrote yesterday, quit saying they, 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 it's not they, it's us. And I do say us a lot. But we have to understand that there are people, the they, 
that have a game plan to rule the world. It has been, as, as Zen indicated, it has been ongoing for centuries and even millennia. It is part of the awakening process from the higher perspective, and it is all us from that perspective. But in the lower perspective, where we live and move and have our being in three dimensions, we live and move and have our being in the upper dimensions spiritually, but in the lower dimension here on, here on planet Earth, it is duality. It is polarized duality. It is not a dance. It is a duel. And we have to understand and play the role of the duel. Somebody said, teach people not to fight for truth, but to stand in truth. And I agree with that, Mike. It is about that. Standing in the truth. But standing in the truth often requires a battle. And how can I, the paradox man, tell you to love and at the same time tell you to fight? Because that's the duality of the paradox. Both are correct in this time. One is ultimately more correct than the other. One is a temporal correctness and the other is an eternal correctness. Peace and love are the eternal correctness. But the battle is a temporal correctness. That's not a mistake. We have to stand in the truth and acknowledge our rights and tell those that would take our rights away from us rights that we're finally beginning to realize are unalienable, that we're finally beginning to realize are our divine birthright, we stand in those and we say, you cannot take them from us because you did not give them to us. They are our power, not yours. And we have the power to just say no. Your gig is up, as Zen said, and as I've said other times. The gig of the elite establishment is up. It's over. They're still trying to play the game. They're still trying to win the battle, but they cannot, as we coalesce and come together as one, forget the, the things that they've used to divide us. They co-opted the Tea Party, the Republican Party and the mainstream. They co-opted that. The Democratic Party has, and move on, and some of these organizations have tried to co-opt the Occupy Wall Street movement. Don't let them do it. The Tea Partiers, the conservatives, and the liberals are not on opposite sides, folks. We're on the same side. We just have to develop the language that allows us to understand that each of us is coming from the same place. We want to be free. We want to be free of the control of those who would take over our world and create the 1984 scenario of a combat boot on the human face forever and ever. That must never happen. Who is it up to? Is it up to our extraterrestrial and angelic realms to, to, to save us? I certainly hope still that they play a role and believe they are playing a role. But the role that they're playing mostly is the awakening of the human spirit the rekindling of the human passion for freedom. This is where the game is really being played. And folks, your higher self, your in the invisible part of you is eternal and infinite and all-powerful. You are part of God. And it doesn't matter your religion. Don't let these people that are trying to say their religion is right. It's an ego game, folks. That's an ego game. Jesus would not play it. Buddha would not play it. Don't let these people tell you that you've got to go by some, some Bible or some Koran or, or any other holy book in order to, to know the truth. Those books are rife with mistakes that have been purposefully put into them. They are not, not to be followed, though there is truth in both of them that I named and in others that I didn't name. There is truth but it does not contain the entire truth. And it contains traps to entrap you and entrain you into a control grid of the, of the leadership of the world that has led the world for so long, but no more as we awaken. 
We can make a world that is sustainable. This is the year of co-creation. Next year, that year of co-creation will continue and even be more so. It is exponential. It is unstoppable. This is the truth that I am here to share with you. And boy, I'd like to take a break. I get so weary going through so many emails and so many things that I'd like to do. And I'm tired. I'm really tired. But I will dedicate my life to its last breath, to spreading the truth and to helping you, each of you, awaken to who you are. Because as you stand in your power, it will make the world a better place for everybody. I don't know exactly what the future holds or what the timetable is. I can't give you that. If I could, I would. But it would probably not be right if I did. It would be my own wishful thinking. But I do give you this. You and I are powerful when we recognize who we really are and that we are all children of the same God that has nothing to do with any of the things that have been used by the power establishment to control us through guilt and fear. We are children of one creator spirit that lives in all of us. I love you. And I encourage you with all of my heart and soul to be your unique self, your authentic self. Be who you are. Find that spark. Let it grow till it burns away everything that is not you. So that you can know and stand in your truth and your power and your love. Namaste. May God bless you.